Debbie, you're back! Oh my gosh! Oh. How was France? Oh. I want to hear all about it. I want to see all the stuff. Oh my god, this all looks so amazing. Tell me, show me. <laughs> oh my god, Stephanie, it was crazy. It was crazy, yeah. I'm exhausted and I have a sore throat. I'm, a, I'm afraid that if I breathe on you, I'm going to give you my germs. It was, um, it was great, but it was also horrifying. Oh my god. Gosh, like, I, I, this I, this story, I need to hear it. Uh, I think everyone else oh, needs we're, to hear it, too. We're live. We're live. We're live, and hey, everybody, can <coughs> they see us? <laughs> Do we have any, anybody watching? We had um, no heads for a minute, but... Oh. Hey, but good morning. There's Andrea and Jackie Flower. Let me pull up some And comments. good morning, everyone. Okay, so I just got back from France. Okay. So and... Um, I still have jet lag and I'm a little bit sick and it was an adventure. It was an adventure. Look up the definition of the word adventure. Have you ever looked that up? No, Stephanie? I want to now though. If you look up the word, the definition of the word adventure, it means going into a dangerous situation where anything can happen. Dangerous? What? Yeah. So if you ever decide to go on a tour, like an antique buying tour of any kind and the word adventure is used in it, that's your first red flag right there. Whoa. <laughs> that wasn't from France. <laughs> no, that wasn't from France. Um, yeah, the definition, in the definition of the word adventure is danger and a lot of other descriptions. And um, yeah, we had some dangerous situations, some frustrating situations, some magical situations. Um, but um, I just, I wanna like preface this with, this is not gonna be your usual live. I'm gonna show you everything I bought. I'm gonna tell you some of the many, many stories that there are to tell about this trip. I cannot wait to hear. Um, because there's so much, I feel like it should be a series of videos but um, all week long we were posting these beautiful pictures and every picture I would post on Facebook, like it would get 10 times the, the engagement, the comments, the likes. And the pictures were like, you can't go to a place like France and it's so easy to find beautiful things to photograph. Yeah. And I had my new phone, so it was really easy to take wonderful pictures and wonderful video and I have so much of that to share with you. But by the time I got back, there was like this huge weight on my shoulders because um, when you're on social media, a lot of times you're referred to as an influencer. Sure. And people look to you for, for trust. We, you put your trust in us in all the years that I've been on YouTube, seven years now, I've built trust with some of you. And I don't take that lightly. And part of the reason I went on this trip, this tour, mm -hmm. tour, mm -hmm. um, was because another influencer went on the tour before us. And as soon as I saw her trip, I tried to sign up for that one. I'm like, oh my gosh, I so admire this artist. And if she's doing this, it must be amazing. And it must be a really great opportunity. So that trip was already booked. France? She yeah. went to France. She too? went to France um, like a few weeks before we did, maybe okay. three weeks before us. Mm. You'll have to excuse me. My throat is like sandpaper, and so because she was an influencer, <coughs> excuse me. Did I also tell you that I choked on a piece of steak? I did hear that story. I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> I'm sure it was terrifying in the moment, <coughs> but now we can laugh about it, right? Right. <laughs> But because this person was an influencer and so talented and so lovely, I immediately contacted the person running this tour and tried to get in and it was sold out. And so this person said, Debbie, why don't you have your own tour? And she wanted me to teach in France. She wanted me to recruit you guys and get 10 people to come over to France. And I was gonna, she wanted me to teach a painting class there to 10 of my followers. I decided not to do that. I decided that I was tired, I needed a vacation, and I just wanted to go with friends so I wouldn't have the pressure of trying to paint in a foreign country. And I told her, you know, I don't really want to teach a class, but I would love to go to France. If I can gather 10 people, could we have a tour? And she offered me a free trip, essentially. I had to pay my own airfare, my food, 
but the $23 that every but $23, $2,300 that everybody else paid, I, was say, that's quite I did not have to pay. So I took that $2,300 that I saved and I bought my sister a ticket because you know, family yeah. in France. Like, when do you get the opportunity? And some of you know that my sister was diagnosed with cancer and is totally recovered now. And I just, you know, after losing our mom, it's like, I want to experience this sure. with my sis. A must, yes. <coughs> so that's what we did. And I contacted all of my friends, Jamie Ray Vintage and Zeb went with us, Kathy from White Swan, Sarah from The Tarnished Pearl, Mara Lafay from Vintage Retail Therapy, Dion Woods from the Turquoise Iris. Am I missing anybody? Myself, my sister, Josie from Josie Paint from Pixie. Paint Pixie, and someone named Deborah, who is a friend of Kathy and Sarah's, works with them. So we were all very excited to go. Oh boy, this is gonna be tough because I'm losing my voice. Oh. Mm. And. We gave our deposit, six months go by, and it's time to pay the balance. We, we paid for our airline tickets. I think I paid about $1,000 to fly there. And we had all paid our money, and then a few days before we're getting ready to go, we start getting messages on Facebook from the trip that had just gotten back, telling us, be careful. It's not what you think it's gonna be. It was nothing that she promised us. All the red flags. <coughs> right. But we had already paid. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to like figure out how to make the best of this because I had invested 23, probably $4,000. And I had um, influenced all of my friends yeah. with me. So we all kind of gathered together and read over the notes from the people who were warning us. And okay, I also want to just preface this with, I'm not going to name this person for legal reasons and because I want to be free to tell you as much as possible because I know there are some of you out there watching who may have put a deposit down with this person. And I want to um, share with you as much as I can. And if I say her name, I feel like I will hold back. So I'm not going to say her name, but um, I will hopefully give you enough clues. <laughs> her M.O. is to approach an artist um, in the furniture painting world, in the vintage world, in the antique world. Someone who most typically works with paint, but not necessarily paint. Could be a jewelry artist. So and a lot of people uses, thanking you for sharing, yeah, by the way. She uses their credibility and gets them to recruit students and the students eagerly sign up because she's she's working off the trust of other people who have established platforms who have been in this business for years and have created trust with the people who follow them so um where was i so we all were warned but it was too late it was literally a week before so we all formed a private group and we formed a private whatsapp group and we just decided <coughs> we're not going to rely on this person. We are going to have a plan B for everything. The paint factor says, please feel free to reference my name. Okay. So, um, Diane from the paint factory just gave me permission to say her name. She is the person that I admire and have been following. And she is the one who went on the trip before us. And so when I was told that she was going to France, with a group of people, I na very naively thought, and Diane um, does not sell DIY paint. She is a brand rep for a, a competing brand of paint, but I was so enamored with her work that didn't even matter to me. And I was just naively thinking, oh, I can go on this tour and nobody will know who I am and I can just learn from her. And I don't care about the paint side of it. I just wanted to learn from her and I wanted to go to France. Like on my bucket list, since I was a little girl, if you asked me, where in the world would you go if you could go anywhere? France, mm -hmm. like always France. I have, I own the Marie Antoinette film. I've watched it 20 times. I've watched Midnight in Paris a million times. I have always wanted to go to France and I never thought that I could afford it. And now I'm in the position where I can. 
And so we all get this warning from the women in Diane's group. Don't go. Oh my God. It's a nightmare. It was horrible. And By we're this time just like, it's too late to back out. Yeah. Like, what would you do if that happened to you? Like, would you just forfeit $4,000? And tell all your friends, oh, just, you know, take your 4000 and chuck it in the trash and forget about it. Like, we had to make the best of it. Mm -hmm. So, we did. And, and we all went into it thinking, okay, surely she's going to treat us good. Because I have a platform of almost 200,000 people on YouTube. And Zeb and Jamie are 130,000. Dion has... <coughs> I don't even know how many on Facebook, 40,000 on lot, Facebook yeah. and how many on Instagram. Josie has a platform. Kathy and Sarah have a, a platform. So we just thought collectively, there's no way that she's gonna treat us poorly. Well, <clears throat> we were sadly mistaken. <laughs> I am so sorry about my voice. I am stressed out about all of this, very emotional, sore throat. So, um, I apologize. Um, I will say that our trip was a lot easier than um, some of the stories I've read from other people who are just, you know, they're not in social media, they just wanted to go to France. But the main thing was, is that, like in a nutshell, I'm gonna tell you all the stories in edited videos, but what I figured out in a nutshell was, if you spend $4,000 to take a dream trip to France and you have seven days to go, what are some of the comments? Um, people are saying they would go and defy the odds. It's a hard call. It's a lot, lot of money, but a once in a lifetime trip. Right. And Pink we're factory all, has your back. <coughs> that's right. And we're all pretty tech savvy and all of us have our businesses. So we're like, we can do it. We're strong women. And we had Zeb with us yeah. too, who Zeb can do anything. Thank God Zeb did save the trip. Like every moment that you saw of the video and every beautiful photograph you saw that we posted was us taking matters into our, our own hands. Like had we not, we would have been stuck in a ghost town with nothing going yeah. on. Four hours outside of Paris. We would have been there for half the trip. That just shows the strength in you guys though that you can take over <coughs> and take it back into your own hands. We did get the Paris experience, but it came at a very high price. Sure. Lots of exhaustion, lots of stress, extra money that we had to pay out of pocket to rent our own Airbnb. And um, we broke down on the side of the road. I heard. Uh, <coughs> horrible. Yeah. So in a nutshell, if I could just kind of summarize everything, you pay $4,000 to take your dream trip to France and you have seven days to, to see what you want to see. If more than half of your trip is spent on the freeway because you're booked in a house that is four hours outside of France, and then you're moving to, we, we stayed in four different Airbnbs. I can't believe in that, in seven, seven days. days. Yeah, that seems ridiculous. Totally ridiculous because everything we wanted to see, we could have stayed in one house and saw all of it. It was all within two hours of us, but without she, Wi Fi, the paint factory said. Without Wi Fi, correct. So we were constantly moving every two days. <coughs> and everywhere we arrived was in the middle of the night because every house was spread so far apart. So the first the first thing that happened, like we're all like we're all well aware. We're all on the plane. We're all like, okay, we're going to meet at this place at this time. And <coughs> uh, I'll sorry. read some comments while okay, you're here. Read some comments. Um, Laura went this summer. She had a wonderful time. Everything went perfectly. No stress. I'm going to guess you did not have this woman as a tour guide. <laughs> um, is that just because you are on an organized tour? Yes. Thank God you're home safely. Yep. Now you know, so you can buy your plane ticket, <coughs> rent a car, and do Airbnb next time. We would have spent half the money if we just did it on our own. And it's, honestly, we ended up doing it on our own anyway. And having to, oh, the paint factory, and having to use paper towel for toilet roll for two days. Oh my uh, gosh. That did not happen to us, but from the very first, 
from the very first thing, we all get to the airport. There's 10 of us. <coughs> and I had contacted our guide and I said, I need- Diane is not the woman who booked the trip, just to clarify, right? Diane from the paint factory? Yeah. She was the previous, she no, was she the, is not the organizer. She's not the organizer. She, she is lovely. She was also a victim to right. the same person. Anyway, I just wanted to yeah. clarify that. Yeah, Diane is not the person to be blamed. Let's make that really clear. And I, I wish I had some hot tea to give you. <coughs> so, we had been warned that the previous trip, there were 10 people on that trip as well as ours, and there was only one van. So there wasn't enough room for all the luggage and all the people and everyone to have a seat belt. And they were told that there would be two vans and two drivers. And when they arrived, they were told that the other driver had an emergency and couldn't show up. So part of that group had to rent their own car and drive themselves. I can barely drive in the United States. <laughs> Have you seen me drive, Stephanie? I've, I've heard <laughs> of the driving. I've never experienced the, the roads are narrow and crazy. And so as soon as I read that, I was like, oh my God, I cannot drive in France. There's no way I can drive in France. I don't think anyone in our group wants to drive in France. And so we get to the, so the week before I contact our organizer, I'm gonna say, we need in writing your promise. I told her, we've been contacted by this other group. We are very concerned. We are thinking about canceling. She's like, no, no, don't cancel. And I said, we need in writing that you will be there with two vans and two drivers. Do I have your promise? Yes. So we all arrive. We're all landed by noon. We're all together. And she is there with one van and herself as the driver. And she's telling us that the other driver is flying in from California and will not be there until 5 p.m. It's noon, we've been on the plane for 15 hours. And she says, so we'll just hang out in the airport for the next five, six five hours. hours and yeah. wait. I'm like, oh no, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not gonna do that. And so she's like, well, I don't know what else to tell you. You know, we have to wait for her. And so Zeb, Zeb of Zeb. The hero Zeb, of the trip. <coughs> what, what do you think he did? He got, he, I think he took control and he got, the van, got in the van and drove you all to where you needed to be. Am I right? He raised his hand and he said, I will drive the second van. Yes. So Zeb went, put his, gave his driver's license and was the driver for the second van. And then she still wanted us to say, she's like, well, how is she gonna get to our house? It's an hour away. And we said, she can take an Uber, but we are going. So very reluctantly, she agreed to that, but she had not even rented the other van yet. She'd only rented one van. So it took about an hour to rent a new van, to have it prepped. Thank God they had another van. And then we all head to the house. Can you read some comments? Because yes. I'm running out of board. Well, everyone <coughs> wants you to take a cough drop, echinacea, hot tea, something. <laughs> I wish I had any of those things for her. Yeah. Um, everyone's just really sorry you drove, or that happened to you. Um, <coughs> everyone's really happy you're home. Yeah, I think it's being on the plane in that yeah. air, breathing all those things. On a positive note, your hair looks great. Thank you. <laughs> and so, then this question, well then what did you pay for if not a guide? I think you're wondering the same thing. We were. <laughs> but at that point, I was like, okay, this is what was going on in my head. I'm like, this woman is disorganized. She seems very flighty mm -hmm. and not able to give a straight answer like every question i asked her was a different answer depending on like at first she's like oh no the driver will be here at 2 30. oh no she's going to be here at five. Oh no i have my own car i own a car and so i like had to pinpoint her i had to like grab her and say do you have two cars yes i'm like okay are they both here no i need to rent the other one so you don't own a car you got here on the train Yes, is, when is she coming? 2.30 or five? It was like this constant, like who's on first? Yeah, aggravating. Kind of situation. Have you ever like tried to have a conversation with someone who just, Yes. it's like you're talking a different language? Absolutely aggravating. 
So in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, and I think everybody else had the same mindset. We are here, we are in this. The best thing to do is give her the benefit of the doubt, to be kind, to be friendly, to not get frustrated, and just chalk it up to the fact that she is just not equipped to be an organizer. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I was kind of like feeling bad for her, like she's in this job that she doesn't belong in, but I wasn't angry at that point. Yeah. I did get angry later. As you should. <laughs> People are asking for you to name her, but you're not going to name I, this person. I'm not gonna name her because I wanna give you as many details as possible and I don't know exactly like the, the line that you walk as far as legalities and lawsuits. So, and because I know, I realize that I do have influence as a person on social media, I have to be really careful about that. Sure. Um, um, also, everyone is telling you to not talk too much because of your voice, so. <laughs> okay. If you feel like you need to take a little break, I think yeah. that people would be okay with that. All right. But I do want you to get your story out as well, so. And I have all this stuff to show you that I did buy. So, um, so we drive to our first house and it's just a one night stay. And in my mind, I'm thinking, why does she have us booked in three houses? You know, she must want us to really see the countryside and see all these different places. And so I was giving her the benefit of the doubt, but we drove there, we had dinner. We all went to bed early because we had to get up the next day to go to Versailles. Versailles is like, that was my number one reason for going to France. Like yeah. I'd seen the Marie Antoinette movie. I wanted to go to Versailles. And um, that was another thing. Like when she approached me, she said, what do you want to see in France? And I said, I want to see Versailles. Dion wants to see Monet's gardens. You know, we also want to do flea market shopping and buy things for our stores. So that's the feedback that I gave her. When she sent me the itinerary a week before, Versailles wasn't on there. Oh, and I, so you I'm, corrected that. Yeah, I'm like, what happened to Versailles? Like, didn't you, don't you remember me telling you? Another this? red flag. <laughs> I'm like, that Versailles was my number one reason for going. And so she's like, oh, I'll fix that. And was then, she American or French? We don't really know. Like, we, she said, you're French speaking host, but she, ne Josie was able to help. Josie speaks very little French and Josie is the one who helped us. She, when we would ask her, what, what does it say on the menu? Yeah. She would change the subject or walk away or um, ask the waiter to tell us. So what does she get out of scamming you guys? Like, I don't understand that part. Like, I'm not sure what she's getting out of, I mean, she's well, getting all your money. a lot of money. money. Okay, a lot of so your money, for sure. $2,300 times 10. I gotcha. And it probably cost, I know it cost $400 a night on average for every Airbnb. And she gets to stay and in the these cost with you. of the cars and she gets to stay in them with us the cost of the cars the cost of the gas the cost of the toll roads but we had to pay all our entrance fees we had to pay for all of our food she bought us milk and coffee and maybe she paid for the flight for the okay. other driver so she's pocketing basically most of that money yeah like fifteen thousand twenty thousand sure. okay. i don't know okay yeah wow yeah so, um, one thought is send her a letter privately <coughs> explaining how you feel. Did that. Okay. She accused me. Okay. And threatened to sue me. Next. Scammers <laughs> should be blasted so we don't get scammed. People are saying it's, um... Yeah. So she's been doing this for over three years and there's a private group where everyone is posting their stories and my story is mild compared to others. Mm -hmm. Um, and I haven't even begun. So... We leave the next morning super early to get to Versailles, which is an hour away. And we get stuck in traffic. The directions are vague. And on the itinerary, it said she had allotted three hours for Versailles. Now Versailles is massive. Like uh, what would be equivalent is if I were taking you to Disneyland, if you were coming from France and you wanted to go to Disneyland, and I said, oh yeah, we just need three hours to go to Disneyland. No, Disneyland's an all day long <laughs> event. Yeah. And Versailles is twice the size of Disneyland. Sure, oh my gosh. So, um, 
so she allotted three hours for Versailles. We ended up being about 15 minutes late and my cell phone rings and it's some French woman and she's like, is this Debbie? And I'm like, yes. And she, because we had all paid in advance and booked a tour together, she ha she's like, where, where are you? You know, you're supposed to be here right now. And I'm like, we're gonna be there in 10 minutes. We're so sorry, we're stuck in traffic. And um, she held the group for all of us. And she like did a roll call of everybody in our group. And so we get up to the line, there's our tour guide and our coordinator and the driver didn't have tickets for our group. They bought the wrong ticket. So they tried to get in, but they wouldn't let them in. So we did the whole tour without her. And we stayed at Versailles. You want to guess how long we stayed at Versailles? Um, all day? Nine hours. <laughs> Nine. So quick question. How would somebody go about booking this tour guide? Like, is it TripAdvisor? Somebody had said something about um, maybe you can post an anonymous review on TripAdvisor. No. She doesn't allow reviews. She, oh, she doesn't allow reviews. And she's not on TripAdvisor. There's probably a reason for that. Yeah. Ooh. She, um, she, her MO is to solicit painters, artists, and get them to kind of do the advertising for her. Okay. She has a Facebook page. I think she's taken her name off of it. Oh, okay. And that's about it. And on her Facebook page, no reviews are there she's put her settings so you can't leave a review and i want to just i want to take responsibility i don't want you all thinking that i don't understand the gravity of the mistake i made i should have done my own research i should have asked for references i should have asked her questions how long have you been doing this can you give me a list of people who have gone on the trip sure. before and after we were warned, I went back through her Facebook page and I noticed that there were no pictures of any human beings on a tour. Oh, wow. It was all just Pinterest pictures of France. No. There way. was maybe five in like, if you scrolled back two yeah. years. Yeah. And um, I'm like, wow, that's really curious. Like you would think for every trip, she would have pictures of happy faces of people. Sure. And so I thought, oh, maybe she hasn't given that many tours. I just thought, oh, maybe she's she's just an experience. She's given maybe three tours. Right. Someone's taking Wrong. advantage of thinking Americans are easy to scam. <coughs> Debbie, yeah. you need to tell us so we don't get screwed. Um. If you are planning a tour, and she doesn't just do France, which I was shocked to find yesterday. Yes. She also offers tours to Ireland and England. Oh. Switzerland, I think. <laughs> uh, Ruth P says you can contact Facebook's legal too and let them know. So they have employees who deal with scam artists like this. Okay, that's a that's a great option. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So <coughs> at this point, I'm still like, okay, giving her the benefit of the doubt. This poor woman just is kind of clueless. These are the things that I bought at Versailles in the gift shop. This We're is, getting to see the goods, you guys. <laughs> this is a children's book in French about Marie Antoinette. This is a little pillbox. I love Marie Antoinette. Do any of you love Marie Antoinette? It's just a little cute little pillbox. Here's a hairbrush that is like a compact. Do you know anything about Versailles, Stephanie? I know nothing about Versailles or <coughs> France at all, really, um, except for a good friend that I have that was born and raised there. Oh, wow. <laughs> we, um, we would have been better off hooking up with her. <laughs> Look, it's like a little plastic compact, and then you open it, and there's a mirror, and then it's a hairbrush oh, that's so that you cute. can carry in your purse. That's very cute. I have so many pictures and so many videos of Versailles, and um, I was so inspired by it. So I am planning from now until Christmas to do a series of DIYs about every place that I saw. I can't wait. Recreating things and telling you more of the details of the story because there's a lot of funny stories. Um, See, there's a lot of good that came out of this trip as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, let's see what else. There's another little mirror compact. What are their comp? This is a bookmark. I got these little pens. Oh, cute. 
This is a scarf and a keychain. Typical tourist stuff. Hi, Hi Julie. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm kind of listening to your story in the background. Yeah. OMG. Have you ever been to France? I have. Julie, come over here and say hi to everybody. Yes, I have. Suzanne Long time loves ago. your shoes. Oh, I bought hi everyone. They can see my shoes. Oh my God, oh. you got those in France. I bought these to take to France, but guess what? I never. They never came out of my suitcase because <laughs> they're um, adorable. France is. They weren't that comfortable muddy, to walk in. Dirty. Oh, well, they're it's really dirty. comfy, okay. but France's streets are pretty filthy, I so you. I didn't want to get them is all jacked stuff? up. This is all my stuff. <gasps> yeah. I have more stuff, but Toilet it's in paper? my. Yes. Oh, French toilet paper. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> Pink toilet paper, you guys. Oh my gosh. I bought three packages of it at the grocery store because I was just like. So the paint factory paper. wants you to tell everybody that she, um, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. She threatened you with legal action for sharing her cautionary tale on her Facebook page. Yes, if you want to go to my Facebook page, Diane from the Paint Factory has her own video, which I shared and then I was threatened by the organizer of this trip. And I use the word organizer very loosely. Yeah. She's the antithesis. I don't know why you can't share your story. I mean, <coughs> you're sharing your story, you're telling who it is, you're telling the truth. Yeah. How, yeah. Why is there a threat there? I don't get it. Okay, so we're all day in Versailles, nine hours. And at this point we're like, Screw the itinerary. We're gonna just do what we want to do. Yeah, which is the we're thing gonna, I would have done that for yeah, sure. Like there that's, was no way you were, could drag me out of Versailles. It was so amazing, and yeah. that was like that's one of the big reasons why I flew halfway across the world was to see Marie Antoinette's guest house. And um, you're flashing your items too fast. <laughs> okay, I will show pictures and things more. Maybe you can hold them up, Julie, while I'm talking. Okay. So. Um, the main thing that I wanted to see at, in Versailles was, cut off. Oh. so I don't know if you know the story of Marie Antoinette, but it's a tragic story. And at some point she just gets totally annoyed with the whole huge palace, opulence, maximalism. And she decides to have her, um, have them build her a, a guest house out in the country outside of Versailles. And she has them build this village, like this peasant's village, because she wants to escape her royal life and pretend like Super she's chart. a farmer. Super Janet, thank you. Thank you, Janet. Very generous of you. Oh my goodness. Yay, lunch money. Woohoo. I'm gonna buy some cough drops with that, Janet. Yes, definitely. <laughs> she wants to escape her, her royal life and just be, like, pretend that she's a peasant. So she has this guest house and Versailles is very over the top and it's amazing but it is a lot like mm -hmm. it's a lot to take in so she builds this like it's almost like a she shed for that day you oh, know cute. but it's not it. a she shed it's yeah. massive <laughs> but she uses color like there was no there was no like saturated colors in Versailles so her house was you know when you think of that Tiffany blue sure. that's Marie Antoinette yes. that looks like cake icing that's what's all over her guest house I love it and this fake village where she would go and farm and that's what I wanted to see and all through Versailles I'm like this is not what I saw in the film I want to see her yeah. color yeah because I I kind of like color uh, I think so yeah <laughs> so um our tour I almost said her name our tour guide doesn't know anything about Versailles. She offers no information. Every question I ask her, she doesn't know. And so I'm like, where's the guest house? And then finally someone in our group is like, oh, you have to take this tram, it costs $10, get out to her countryside house, and there you can see it. So we all get on the tram, we pay like five or 10 euros, I don't remember what it was, and we take it out and and then everybody's just getting off and there's all these different directions to walk in because it's sprawling and we go in one direction and we spend hours through the village, which was neat. But I'm like, this is not it. This is not what I saw in, in the films and in the photographs and on all my research. And so we're just about to leave the place. It's starting to rain. And I'm like, there's one building we haven't seen. We should go over there and see what that is. Do you want to know what that was? That was the cottage you were looking for? Yeah, online? that was her her guest house oh. and that's where all the magic was like the amazing blue and the yellow and her furniture and her everything was there and I was just like this is it this is like it was amazing but we had to run through it we oh. had to see it in 30 minutes because 
Huh. Nobody knew in our group because we're all from so America. So that's the other confusing thing to me too because, okay, she's already got your money. I know she's obviously in this scam, but like what she she really didn't know anything about Marie Antoinette's anything about Versailles at so all. So many questions I asked her that she told me. Because what what were, would it have been to just be like, yes, go in that direction. Right. Like a little bit of research. I, I don't know. Has so, she been in business for a while or she yeah. just oh my god. Three or four years she's been doing this. Wow. So Dion's here. Hi Dion. <laughs> hey Dion. So gosh. Then we it's time to it's time to leave. It's getting dark. It's starting to rain. We all get back on the train and they ask for our tickets that, that we paid on the way out. And thank God mine was just right in my pocket. Yeah. But Josie and Mara couldn't find their ticket. And no one told us, hold on to your ticket, you're gonna need to show it on the way back. <laughs> and um, so they had to pay their fee again. So then the other thing is, is in France, you can't eat dinner until seven o'clock because the restaurants don't open till seven. Like everything closes down after about 12. You get lunch until that point. But if you don't eat by 12, I think, from the hours of 12 yeah. and seven. I didn't realize, so I was in Spain a few years ago now and I know they have a siesta, but so it's very similar to that. I didn't know France had the same thing. So nobody's yeah. working in the afternoon. Which is fine. Like, I'm not knocking wow. France. That's their culture. But you have to adjust yeah, to that. Yeah, definitely. So we'd been, at, we'd been in Versailles all day long, and we go into the town of Versailles, and we're waiting for the restaurants to open. We wait like 30 minutes so we can eat. We eat a dinner. It's pretty good. And we're there for a couple more hours. So by this time, it's like 9, 30, 10 o'clock and we have to drive to our next house. Do you want to know how far away our next house was? Half a day? I don't know. Four, Four hours. hours. Four hour drive in the country, in the dark. Thank God Zeb like was able to navigate the streets. But the whole time I'm thinking, man, it sure would have been nice to like stay at the other house that we just left that was only an hour from here. Or maybe she could have booked a house in Versailles itself or any other place, like why are we driving four hours? Sounds like she was going with the cheapest. We, cheapest we don't and... really know. And so I'm just still giving her the benefit of the doubt thinking this place that we're going to must be amazing because surely she wouldn't, after a full day, make us drive four hours. And if you look at the map of France, like it's not that big. Like it was almost on the whole other side of the, the country. Wow. So we get there and there's two vans. So she's in the other van. Zeb is in our van. And we arrive 20 minutes before the other van. And so we message them and we're like, hey, you know, where's the key? Well, they have it. So we got to sit in the dark for 20 minutes and wait. And this town is like very small, very rural, just this little village. It feels like it's out in the middle of nowhere. Um, we all get in, we all go to bed. It's a, a beautiful place. It was a very beautiful place. A chateau, a former monastery with three floors. We all go to sleep and we wake up the next morning and it's on the river and it's the most picturesque, postcard, beautiful place you can even imagine. I have pictures and video, which I'm gonna share in future, future video. And so I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is where like, the amazing flea market shopping is, and this is where we're gonna get all our cool stuff because we had all come to buy things to resell in our store. Yeah. We wanted to make it a profitable trip. Sure. So we get out, we start wandering around the town, and it's a ghost town. Like, there's like five people on the street. Half the stores are closed. And I'm like, what is, what's going on here? And, I, and, and so we start going into the shops that are open, and they are very, like, there's there's one antique store that's overpriced. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the shops are, like, very dated. Like, the clothing, like, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I could buy a cute outfit while I'm here. Because there are, like, I'd seen in the airports, like, a Hugo Boss jacket that would cost $2,000 here is about 400 euros there. Okay. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make the best of it. I'm still, like, wishful yeah. thinking. I'm like, I'm going to buy some cute boots or I'm going <laughs> to buy a cute top. Yes. Because I like to shop. Get that Paris I like fashion. I had money in yes. my, I had 
lots of euros and I was ready to roll. I'm like, let's do some shopping. We went into every store that was open and Stephanie, you know, you probably, you guys have probably figured out about me that I, I do like to shop. Of course. Yeah. Well, I don't know a woman that doesn't. But. Right. <laughs> I didn't, yes. I didn't find anything to buy, and I was looking really hard. Nothing. Zip. Wow. Zero. Yeah. Like, even we even found some thrift stores. Nothing. Did she know you guys were upset with her at this point? Like, we, really getting we like, disappointed? We were frustrated, but we were still hopeful okay. because it was only the third day. Okay. And um, so then we're, like, wandering through the shops, and she's supposed to take us to a macaroon museum tour. That seems so bizarre to me that she would think you would want to go to a, a macaroon, macaroon museum. <laughs> museum. But, I'm, but I'm still oh thinking, okay, maybe it will be like beautiful, like a Marie Antoinette, <laughs> pink and green and aqua. No, it was a, it was just a macaroon bakery. There was no museum. Oh. There was no history macaroon in macaroon. Bakery. I walked in there and I don't even eat sugar. So I was just like, I'm out. So who was the most cranky? <laughs> who was the most cranky? Um, Probably me, but at this point I wasn't cranky yet. Yeah, I was you're, still you're, just like, yeah, we're in France. I was like, you know, when you're in France, you're like, yay, I'm in France yeah. with all of my friends. And so then I walk up to her at this point. I'm like, um, I have to think of a fake name for her because I keep almost saying her real name. How about um, Becky? Becky. <laughs> <laughs> or Felicia. Felicia. You know? Bye, Felicia. I walk up and I'm like, Felicia. I'm like, what? When? When are? When are we going to the shops to buy the antiques and the bargains? And she had told us she was gonna. We were in a gas station and we were about to buy a bunch of French soaps, and they were really beautifully packaged in the gas station. And we were thinking, oh, these are so inexpensive. We can resell them in my store because I'd never seen any like it. They were like a dollar fifty, and I'm like, I could sell these for three dollars in my store. And they're beautiful. And she stopped us. Felicia stopped us and said, don't buy those because I'm going to take you to a store where you can get French soaps for 30 cents. And so we didn't. And so I walk up to her after, you know, I'd been in 20 stores by this time. We'd been wandering the streets for hours. The Macaroon Museum was a bust. And I'm like, Felicia, when are we going to the store where the soaps are 30 cents? Yeah. And she says, oh, I'm going to take you there right now. It's 10 minutes from her. here. We'll get the van. You guys follow me. And we're going to go to this amazing store that's filled with antiques. This antique store is going out of business. And the soaps are 30 cents. And so I'm like, let's go get those soaps. Yeah. <laughs> so we pile into the van. And we follow her to this other little village that's 10 minutes away. And... Do you want to guess what it was? Oh my gosh. I can't Do you want to guess, Julie? Come over here, Julie. You guys. <laughs> well, I missed the first part of it. So, soaps. So, she was going to buy soaps at this market. Just sit here because uh -huh. my head's cut off. <laughs> for two or three euros, which is okay. probably about two or three dollars. Yeah, it's a, a little euro more. is like a dollar ten. So okay. It's pretty equivalent. And okay. the tour guide, Felicia, <laughs> Felicia. says, says no don't buy those soaps i have uh, this place we're gonna i'm gonna take you to they have many more soaps than that that are like 30 cents each okay so she's like take so we me put there back now. the soaps mara and i put back all our soaps i yes. was gonna buy like a dozen now she's gonna buy like two dozen because yeah. they're only 30 cents i'm yeah. gonna take a wild guess and say it was like a gas station road side with a little shop store i wish no, oh, was that, that, been, that? that would have been better. Oh my no. gosh. It was a dusty, dirty, cold apartment. And it was filthy. And someone obviously lived there. It was not a store. And we're walking through. Mary and I are walking through. Were things priced? No. No. Oh, it so just looked like someone's apartment that this is so bizarre. bizarre. Collected antiques. How is she still in business? And so we go upstairs. And we see like the beds not made. We see pink toilet paper in the bathroom. So you go through her bedroom. Yeah, and That's we're insane. like. That's insane, it was her house, you guys. And, and so then Mara says to me, she whispers, she goes, I think this is Felicia's house. I think she lives here. And so we turn to the driver, you know, the one from California. Yeah. And we, she's upstairs and we say, does Felicia live here? And she goes, yeah, this is her apartment. What? 
Oh, so, how bizarre. Yeah, so then it all started to come together. You know when you have been going through stuff and you're like, why is this not adding up? Why is this not making sense? And then all of a sudden, all the pieces of the puzzle start to come together and it hits you like a brick yeah, on the head. Yeah, because like, that, that would have been the exact yeah. moment where I would have, yeah. nope. And, and we had this private group on Facebook for our tour and she had been posting pictures of all these antiques and I started to recognize them in her apartment. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I'm like, this woman brought us four hours into the middle of this ghost town because she because she had kept saying, you know, you can get a container, you can ship furniture back. And we were talking about it and we were considering it. And the furniture is so So not so only cheap. did she oh did she just want to scam your money for, for being the tour guide, but now she wants you to buy all her crap. Yeah. Yeah, and so she, that was why we had to drive four hours in the middle of the night after a nine hour day at Versailles. To get 10 minutes away from her own home. So we could buy no. her, her soaps and her vintage. And so I'm looking and Mary and I are mad. And at that point I switch from giving her the benefit of the doubt to I am pissed. Yes. Mad. I can't even. Yeah. Know. So how and, did you not like, so then I have the smile yeah. on my face like this. And then I walk downstairs and I'm like, and I had looked, I'm like, Jeanette. Oh. <laughs> Felicia, Felicia, <laughs> where are this? I, that was not intended. Maybe, I, I don't know. Maybe it was necessary. Out. I'm like, where are the soaps, Felicia? And she goes, oh, they're around here somewhere. And she points to this corner. Stephanie, you, you want to guess what the soaps were like? I do, I'm kind of guessing they're like in her bathroom. Like, I don't know. I can't even imagine. They were used. No. They were dirty no. and dusty. They didn't have any wrappers. They had hairs stuck to them. Oh, no. There was four of them. There were four soaps. Four 30 cent <laughs> 40 used dirty. Soap. We we nicknamed them the butt wipe soaps. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and obviously you did not buy them. No. Okay, No. I did find, and my style is very um, boho, so there wasn't a lot for me to buy. Uh, Jamie and Kathy found a lot of beautiful enamel wear. And In farm, her home? Yeah, farmhouse okay. things that okay. they did buy. They bought smalls. Nobody bought furniture. If I could have bought furniture, there were some things to buy there. But, but would you that, have just for like... No, at that point I found one old um, needle point that was black with flowers and it was cool on a scale of 1 to 10 I probably liked it a 6.5. Okay. But I, you know, I was trying to spend my money. Yeah. But at that, I had it in my hand, I was about to buy it, she told me 10 euros and I was going to buy it and then I sat down on the dusty uh, settee with Mara and I'm like, you know what, I am not giving her one more euro of my money. Yeah. <laughs> so so I didn't buy it and we all left and we still have like a few hours of daylight with nothing to do we're in France and we got nothing to do because we're in the middle of nowhere town so Zeb and Jamie they say hey we found this um oh and I want to thank you guys by the way because it's because of our followers the paint factory says that was a great slip <laughs> it's out there now people, I really didn't mean to do that hey for, now people go name. looking for a woman with yeah. that name who's doing tours or on a Swedish French decorating page right it's you know I think people are going to bombard her page with but I think maybe they should I think so too and I don't I'd know what like, legal action she has against you, to be honest with you, just telling the truth. Absolutely. I'm telling what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, honestly, my story is nothing compared to other women. I've read some of the other stories. My story is mild. Mine is a frustrating story. We managed, because we took action. I can't put believe it your story hand. is we mild. We managed to salvage our trip. We, we were exhausted and stressed, but we managed to get a French vacation out of it. So, the paint um, factory is going the legal route. Good. Yeah. So at this point we have two hours and we have been posting pictures on social media and our followers, Zeb and Jamie's followers and my followers were giving us tips about France. You look up this word, go see this word, go to the charity shop. Thanks shops. to all the wonderful followers. Yeah, thanks to all of you. You suggested that we look up the charity shops and you told us that's where the real bargains are because our Felicia guide was not taking us anywhere where there were bargains, as except, promised. Except to her apartment. Yeah. So 
So then um, so Zeb funny. is like, hey, I found a charity shop on GPS. It's closed because it was after five by this time. He goes, but we have an hour to kill before dinner. Let's just go look in the window and then we can come back tomorrow because we were booked in Nowhereville for th three more nights. So we're like, yeah, we got nothing else to do. We're in France and we got nothing to do. Can you imagine being in France with nothing no. to do? You should only... never have to say that sentence. No. So we all drive 20 minutes to this charity shop. We're looking in the windows. All the windows are shut. We can't see much, but we're like, this has got to be the best option that we've seen so far. We'll plan on coming back tomorrow. So then we go to dinner and she had reserved this place for us for dinner. And we walk in and there's nine women. Well, actually there's 11 women, including Felicia and the driver and Zeb. So 12 of us all together, 11 women and one big guy. What a saint Zeb is. Yeah, but we were the only women in the restaurant. Not that there was anything wrong with that. Just but awkward. We, it was just like, everyone was looking at us like, what is going on? So I asked Felicia, I'm like, why are, why are we the only women in this restaurant? It was a busy restaurant. And she's like, oh, you know, in France, women don't eat in restaurants. I've like, never has heard it, that Have any of you life. heard that? That's what she told me. She's like, all of, these are all businessmen who are here. They work at the plant and then they come here for dinner. The women don't go out to restaurants. That is the most bizarre, yeah. I mean, at that point, how could you believe anything she's saying? Yeah, I'm like, what? I'm like, are you sure? And Dion and I were like, no, we don't feel very welcome. And they're all looking at, and like, maybe it's true because they were all looking at us like we didn't belong. <laughs> and um, then our food comes and... Oh, the story. <laughs> I took a bite. I did already hear this part. I took a bite of my steak. It was a small bite and I started to choke on it. And I'm like, Everyone in the restaurant was already looking at us, and I'm coughing, and I'm like, oh my God, it's gotta, you know, you tell yourself, you go through this thing, I'm not choking, it's fine, I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna be fine, I'm trying to drink water, and then my sister, who's 95 pounds, is sitting next to me, and she's like, Debbie, are you okay? Are you okay? And then I hear myself, it's like all kind of a blur, and I'm breathing like this, and she's like, oh my God, Debbie, and then my sister screams, Oh dear God, please don't let my sister die. Oh my and gosh. I'm like, oh my God, am I gonna die? You know, and I'm like, no, no. And I'm arguing in my head, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then I'm like, but I'm breathing weird and my sister is screaming. And then Mara starts praying in tongues. And I'm like, what, what is happening? And then the next thing I know, my sister is behind me and she gives me the Heimlich. Oh my gosh. And then I throw up into my napkin. This is doubtfire. And then I look up and like, the three waiters are standing there staring at me and I'm like, it's fine, it's fine, I'm fine. Oh my gosh, how terrifying, embarrassing, <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. So at that point, we go back to our monastery chateau place. Dion it's says this all happened in less than <coughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and wow. we all decide to, it's three, three stories in this chateau. It's at, it's probably 10 o'clock at night. We're tired, you know, we're tired. And we all have a meeting and we're like looking at the itinerary and we realize that we're going to be in this town for three more days. To go back to her apartment to shop more? I what? guess. Uh, we all decide as a group that we want to blow this pop stand. Yeah. And we're like, we got to get out of here. We cannot sit in this place for three days and just waste our trip to France. And we realize, we look at the itinerary and we were booked at Monet's Gardens. We were booked to do a tour, this red on it. Bus. Sorry, I think is that the porta potty guy? Sure oh, is. God. I did buy a microphone, but we gotta figure out how to use We're it. We're gonna um, just pretend he's not here as best we can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we realized that we only have one day in Paris, and it's three hours that she has scheduled for us, and another three hours at Monet's Garden. And after your experience at Versailles, you know that's not like. Yeah. And then the next day we were supposed to go to this flea market, but we had already heard from the previous group that there were only 12 vendors, that the prices were high, and that it was slim pickings. And so I'm like, this is the lame flea market we already heard about, yeah. and we do not want to waste three days just sitting here twiddling our thumbs. What are we going to do? And so we all decide, you know, we should look on Airbnb and see if we can rent a house back in Paris yeah. so that we can spend the next two to three days 
seeing what we want to see. Smart, taking it into your own hands. So we, we, you know, we start looking at our options. We go on to the Airbnb for, for Paris, for Versailles, for any house like within an hour of Paris, and we find some options. And then we all, well, we actually, none of, none of us wanted to talk to Felicia. Sure. Um, but Kathy her. volunteered. We like sent her in because Kathy was the one who was dealing with her most of the time. And so Kathy went into her room and said, we want to leave. We want to get out of here. You know, can, we need to find a different house. We don't want to be stuck out here. We don't understand why you brought us here. And so then she's like, no, no, um, you know, it will be way too expensive. It's very hard to find a house that will accommodate 12 people and it will cost what, so much more than what you are paying for here. And you'll have to forfeit what you've already paid for the two more days to stay here, three more days, I can't even remember. And she's like, there's, you know, there, I can look on Airbnb for you, but I don't think there's gonna be anything. So she's looking, 20 minutes go by, the clock is ticking, we all wanna go to bed. And she says, I can't find anything. So I have Airbnb mm -hmm. and thank God I got special service with Verizon so that I could get Wi-Fi no matter where I was because this house had no Wi-Fi. And that was another complaint that we had heard that there's no Wi-Fi and how do you book 10 people who have social media platforms and who want to go live in a house with no Wi-Fi. So I get on and I find a house that's $400 a night, the same price that we had been charged for the monastery that we were currently in. And it had beds for everyone and it was in Versailles, less than an hour from Paris. And it looked fine and it, there was Wi-Fi. And the girl who rented the house was young and current and yeah. up to date on what people need and so we showed it to Jeanette and oh, sorry Felicia God it's already right. out there <laughs> and she's like oh yeah I saw that house I didn't think you would like it and we're like no we're gonna we're gonna book this now for the next two nights until we are booked for the house the other yeah. house that she had for us in Giverny so the next morning we all get up and we go and we plan to hit the flea market that she had scheduled for us out on our way out of town and get to Versailles and hopefully be able to see the sights and get some shopping done yeah. and find the charity shops on our own. And we were planning on hitting charity shops all the way back to Versailles, which is four hours back and shopping along the way. And so we, we hit a few stores and um, the day before I had asked Felicia, I'm like, why are the shops so out of date? Why does everything feel like it's stuck in 1984? And she's like, that's how it is. In Paris, everything is very much behind the times. And I said, even in Paris? And she said, yes, even in Paris, none of the fashion or it, the home decor is current. Everything is, you know, decades behind. But she, she didn't <clears throat> want you to get to Paris If any at of all, you have been or? to Paris, you know that that is not true by any means so not true like they are ahead of us there's so much good fashion there that we don't even have it's i ridiculous. believe it I it was just this it. town this town was just nobody lived in it jackie says don't we get our fashion from them <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah they're ahead of us yes so even just going into the next town which was called portieres we could see that the, the shops were much better and the flea market she had scheduled for us was totally not good. I did end up getting a little brooch that I'll, in this box right here, this old box, but the, the price, I paid 10 euros for this wooden box. Not wow. What's euros? Is it half of the dollar it's or? It's like a dollar 10. It's like a dollar 10. So she paid like 10 So, you know, it wasn't oh, like crazy good shopping there by euros. any means. And there were 10, 10 vendors with not a lot of stuff. So it took us an hour to go through that. All of this came in the box? <coughs> no, all of that was separate things separate. that I bought later. Um, the so then we get back in the car and we go to the French Home Depot, which was amazing, which will be in a future video because I feel like we're way over our hour, are we? We are right at our okay. hour, so. So I'm gonna wrap this up, but I do wanna tell you the, the crescendo to this segment and then there will be a to be continued. But I think I've made my point. Yeah, I think so. Um, 
But people are really enjoying your story, by the way. They're stopping, it's like, intriguing. stopping the dishes, stopping their own painting projects. Cause they can't, they're just super hooked. So. I don't know how you so. guys should hold this woman down and beat the heck out of her. Yeah. Well, I mean, really, I would have been at this point like, yeah, yeah. No. I would have been. We that, like, give me okay. my money back. Yes. I will tell you that f bombs did. Fly oh, I'm that sure. Year. I can't As imagine they, they should they have. <laughs> As they should From have. From people who never say that. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, I'll say the f word. Not on camera, but <laughs> but f bombs flew from people who never say it. Like maybe once a year they say it, or once a decade. So this is this is the the crescendo to this yes. day. Half, we're not even halfway through the trip. We're all in the vans. They're ahead of us. Felicia is driving one van with three of us. The other seven of us are in the other van with Zeb. Do you want to know why there were only three passengers in Felicia's van? Well, I don't think anybody wanted, I would not want to drive <laughs> no with her. No seatbelts, no room. She drove like, she crashed both of the vans. She what? drove crazy and got lost. It just and, keeps getting better yeah. and better. So like three brave people stuck it out with her and the rest of us are crammed into the other van. Like, thank you, Zeb, for not making us go in the back. Uh, so then our van breaks down on a toll road with nothing but huge trucks. It's like a truck stop toll road. Our van breaks down, we have to pull over and the trucks are just and they're massive. And Zeb is trying to get out on the driver's side and we're all screaming at Zeb, get out on the passenger side. We refused and he was like, I'll be fine. I'll be typical man, you know? Sure. And we're like, no, don't do it Zeb. And Jamie's like, don't you dare. And so he <laughs> climbed over Jamie and got out and like looked at the hood and was like, I don't know what's wrong with the van. And the lights came on and we were like uh, 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 down the road. And so we like, he gingerly babies the van to the next truck stop. Wow. We get out. And in France, it's not the same. What There's no AAA. They don't come pick you up. It was, we rented it through Alamo, or Felicia did. And we call Alamo, and we're put on hold for 20 minutes. And then we finally get an operator, and we get disconnected. Uh, of course. Doesn't can you, that always- Can you wait for me? I need to go get some popcorn for this <laughs> entertainment. You guys seriously could all like write a movie, a oh, yeah. movie script. Like a Chevy about Chase your, kind of yes. family vacation thing. I'm not thing. kidding when I say that. Christopher Butler says that he has to go pee so bad, but he cannot leave. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So then Jamie is the one calling and she calls again and gets on hold again. This happened three times, 20 minutes on hold, only to get con disconnected three times. Yeah, I would have broke down crying. <laughs> yeah. So then we finally get a hold of someone and Zeb is looking over the contract and he's like, it looks like, and we're trying to read it because it's in French, but it looked like Felicia decided not to go with the insurance. That's smart. We don't know to this day. I'm not going to say that that's true or not, but that's what it looked like from what we could decipher. And that's why they were giving us the runaround, like Alamo was saying. So we finally get a hold of Alamo, and they tell Jamie that in France, we, Alamo cannot come pick us up with a new van. They, we have to call the police. Wow. Why? Because that's how they do it there. Wow. So she tells us, call the police, and then call us back. So at, so at this point, Dion wants to do the Friday Night Live because it's Friday and she had promised her viewers that we were going to do Friday Night Live. So you're going to do them from the side of the road? I, so we get I that, did catch that one. If you go to Dion's page of the Turquoise Iris, you will see us all there at the truck stop talking about the broken down van and you can see the van and you can see the tow truck. And so we go live and we start explaining what happens and I immediately post on my Facebook page, please pray for us. We're stuck yeah. on the side of the road and they don't seem to want to come get us. And so then so We're, you almost die by choking. You almost <laughs> die by getting hit by massive traffic on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So then it's like the sun is setting and we're at this truck stop and we're hungry. Ugh. And we are like, wow, another day wasted in France. Wow. And so Dion and I are live and then um, I, I see this big 
tow truck pull up and I'm like, here's the tow truck. But what about all of our luggage? There was seven of us with three suitcases each crammed into this van. Like how are, how are we gonna get out of here? And so we had immediately sent an SOS to Felicia because they had carried on without us. With only three. And, and they were yes. like minutes away from our next house. And we're like, please turn around, you know, drop everybody off, come back with an empty van and get us. Yeah. Do you she think? said no. She said no. She said no. She said no. Of course no. she said no. Yeah. So we, I'm like texting Kathy and Sarah, and I'm like, please, this is not a joke. We are stranded here. We don't know what's going to happen. They're telling us that they cannot get us a new van. We need her to come get us in the other van and take care of this. And she's like, they're like, we're trying. F-bombs wow. are flying. That's what they told us. Wow. That they had to... These two lovely women who never use foul yeah, language yeah. had to force her to get in the car and come get us. But she was stalling and she was talking on the phone to Alamo and saying that she didn't want to drive all the way, that way back. And did she keep her cool like during when you when she, she could see you guys were stressed out? Did she seem to like feel like she was a, like she knew no? She, she was a very okay tense flighty person who couldn't complete sentences. She Nancy got. says she, she would have tied her up and rolled her over a cliff. <laughs> Agree. So, so this tow truck guy tells us, and, and Josie can speak a little bit of French and she understands French. So she interprets and says that the tow truck driver wants us all to get in his truck. He's putting our van on the back of his tow truck and we are all to pile up in the back cab. Like the sleeper? Yeah, the sleeper. Uh. So we're all in there with no seat belts, and thank God it was only 10 minutes away, the tow yard. So they tow our van to the tow yard. Talk about bonding. Yeah. Your... But then when we get there, it's a Hertz tow yard, not an Alamo. And they're like, the people behind the counter are like, we don't even know why you're here. Like, we don't know why we were called to come get you, but we can't help you because we're Hertz and you're Alamo. What? And so Josie starts calling her relatives in France and there's all kinds of phone conversations going on. Meanwhile, and Felicia's still... Felicia's still not coming and F-bombs are still flying wow. at the house and we are just like, what? And then, and then the Hertz people say to us, it's dark, we need to leave, it's the end of the day. So they take us to this metal cage. It's like, you know, like the metal containers that they kind of turn into trailers? Yeah. So they, they lock the gate to the tow yard and there's one door that opens out into the street. We have to take all of our suitcases into this little metal cage. Wow. <laughs> like a jail almost. That's... That was like 10 by 10. And we're all sitting there there's a light, thank goodness. Wow. And we're just waiting for somebody yeah. to come get us. But they're like, we have to go now. Wow. You, you know, you, if somebody pulls up, you can exit through this door. And my first fear was, oh my God, what if that door locks and someone does come to get us oh, and we can't get the door open. Yes. So I'm like, prop the door open. Yeah, don't yeah. make sure it opens, you know? And so Whew. I was just like, don't let the door shut and lock on us. And we're all sitting there and we're just like, still, you know, like, is she on her way yet? Is Felicia on her way? And then finally they tell us she just left, but we know it's going to be an hour for her to come back and get us. It's nine o'clock at night. And then it's going to be another hour to get back to the house. So we're going to be another at the house yeah. with no food at about 11 o'clock. I think if my memory serves me right, it might've been later. And so then we finally hear from Alamo and they say that they are sending some cars for us. And we explain there's seven of us with luggage. Like we need more than one car and they need to be big cars. And so, but we're still not quite sure because of the language barrier. And so I tell Dion and everybody else, I'm like, don't, nobody is to send a text to Felicia. We let her continue yeah. to drive toward us yeah. until we are in that van headed towards our house. We, she can just keep on driving. Yeah. So that's what we do. And we get in the van and the two French guys say in French to Josie that they can only take us a hundred kilometers. And then after every kilometer after that, we will be charged, I don't know what, 10 euros. So by the time we got to the house, it was a $300 fee. That you didn't pay for. We didn't pay. Good. And Felicia didn't have the cash for it either. 
And so uh, what happened? So we get to the house and somehow like she uses the, because we had booked a house with Wi-Fi, she was able to use the Wi-Fi in the house and run her credit card. But they were saying, we don't have a, you know, we don't have Wi-Fi, so we can't use our square yeah, to run yeah. your card. So she paid and I think Zeb chip, chipped in a little bit to cover, like there was $40 wow. left, the euros or whatever. And so that's where the story, that's where I'm gonna leave the story. There's more, there's so much more. But it's been over an hour and I haven't shown you anything yet. But um, my- Should we show a little bit yeah, before, show. We, before I am, we- This is to be continued. I have videos coming with more of the story. But what I wanna say to you is, yes, it was, it was my responsibility and I took all of my friends into this situation and we did make the best of it but if but if you are planning a trip please it would break my heart if you think oh this is the trip that Debbie went on it must be good I'm gonna book it because Debbie went on it this was bottom good. line I feel like do your research, right? Yeah. You have to be Get diligent references. and you have to do your research and If there are have any references. references, yeah, if there's no trip advisor, if there's nothing outside of Facebook, don't don't just go by the pretty pictures that you see. Yeah, I mean that's the yeah. that's and, what I'm getting from your story. Yeah. And, and if you have a tour booked and you're not sure, you can email me at it's orders at diypaint.co. You can email me there and you can tell me the name of your um, your organization and I, I won't be able to endorse anybody obviously but I can tell you I'll be able to tell you privately if that's the person I used or not but please learn from my mistake I made a huge mistake um, it wasn't it was not worth the money we could have spent half Let's, the money let me end by asking though there was good moments and there were fun lots times. of good moments but we cr we created those moments we took the tour into our own hands by by renting the extra house by going out on our own we did there's a lot more to the story and we did have beautiful moments that were very rushed and very exhausting but we did find those moments we all bonded yeah i can't imagine we, how much closer you must all be after going through a challenging experience like that yeah let's show a few items because i'm okay. really excited to see some of the stuff so we did stop at the french home depot and there were three aisles of wallpaper this is just one roll all the rest of the rolls are in my sister's suitcase so i'll be sharing that later Ooh, do you have big plans with these i do my um once Ooh, i, I realized vintage, that yeah. it was going to be really hard to find vintage antiques I decided that I was gonna buy French art supplies and make DIYs with things that I had never seen in the United States. And so I have a bunch of DIYs planned. So I bought a bunch of art supplies and different different things that um, I'm gonna turn into DIYs. So this is just one roll. There, there was three, like there, it wasn't called Home Depot, it was called something else. I took video, um, but there were three aisles of amazing wallpaper. I'm super excited yeah. to see what you're gonna do with all this. Um, the brushes. Oh yeah. This is so soft. Yeah. So in their paint aisles and their brush aisles, they have amazing brushes that are very inexpensive. I mean, they're not the quality of the brushes we sell, but I bought a bunch of them because look, they have pink bristles and blue handles this one has blue bristles and then there was this fun little brush shaped like this and look at this look at this it's amazing isn't that amazing that's huge what are you gonna do with this are you gonna actually use it um i might i think i'm gonna make shadow boxes and yeah. whatnot because our brushes amazing. are much better quality but i just i thought they were so fun and then this brush it has a rubber tip. Have you ever seen a brush? That's no, interesting. but I, that I would be really cool. I don't know what it's used for, but I bought it because look at aqua handle and I'm going to find out. Yeah. If anyone knows what you use this kind of brush for, let me know in the comments. Um, oh, I think you're amazing. Then I got this. This is a metric system tape measure. And I bought it because when I buy things online, a lot of times it's in centimeters. And so then I have to like do the conversion. Yeah, do the math. 
And this way I can just get out my metric tape measure and find out how big it is. I love it. Isn't that fun? Um, do the Dion with that brush. Love that yes. round brush. Interesting brushes. Oh, these casters, they had like aisles of casters and there were oh, blue wow. casters and red casters and these are wood wood wheels. What are you so going to do with this? This is like, this is for your home. Know. Yeah, this something. Like, like, I'm going to make a DIY and put casters because everything's better with casters. These are so pretty. Um, what else? Oh, these little little brayers they were super small we went to a french art supply store and look this how tiny so cool. they are so i just i bought a bunch of these to sell in the shop their uh, brayers are so awesome for iod products Sorry, I so gotta touch i just you guys. thought oh a little mini travel size brayer so i bought a bunch of these um i think i'll save the rest for yeah for the next, next time we got the next more video we'll actually create with some of the stuff i have a more uh the second version or second yeah, half part that two. version part That's two just part one um any other questions before we go um oh everyone's Can't loving what they talk see? about the scarf right now okay. look how awesome this is this was the last thing that i bought we hit the grocery like gorgeous. everything was so rushed that i didn't have time to buy the things that i wanted <laughs> <laughs> and everyone was going to the grocery store to get food for the last night and i see this shoe shop across the street and i tell my sister you guys while you're in the grocery store i'm just going to run across there i was hoping to buy a pair of shoes, shoes in a yes. grocery store uh, no, no not shoes. in a grocery store Sorry, half listing. Sorry. and i found the scarf and it was 25 euros and I'd seen one at Anthropology for 110, so I bought it. It is so incredibly soft. And we don't, it never gets that cold here, but I'm gonna go see Jamie Ray oh, on the yes. 25th, I leave. Okay. So I'm like, this will be perfect to wear to Utah. And, um, oh, I did wanna mention, I am going to Jamie Ray's for her grand opening, and we're teaching a class on Monday, the 28th, I believe. Her grand opening is on the 26th of October. And then that following Monday, we're teaching a class and we have room for about 12 students. And every student that comes to Jamie Ray's class, they get a free DIY pop socket. Oh, cool. Julie, will you go get one of the No, pop I have it right here. Oh, yeah. Pop so these are, the, um, these are the DIY pop sockets. And if you sign up for her class, I think there's a few spaces left. I'm bringing these for everybody who comes. So, um, so it's gonna be amazing. Go to Jamie Ray Vintage to sign up for the class. Even if you're not taking the class, Come meet me at the grand opening in Lehigh, Utah. I am so excited. I love Zeb and Jamie. I love them more than I ever loved them after all of this. Zeb was our hero. Like, he saved our trip. Yeah, your absolute savior, huh? Yeah. Thank God for Zeb. Yeah. Um, will you be at your shop around December 16th? I don't know. I have a you couple got a, She's got a lot of traveling to do this um, end of this year so yeah i'm going to zeb and jamie's and then i'm going to south carolina for the rachel hollis and then i'm going to see kelly weiler in november but most likely i don't um, think it's december kind of off subject but uh sherry bought some of the in and out bottles or the oh, FIFA do you bottles. like them sherry do you even use them for the <coughs> sample bottles and does yours have a nozzle mine has a wired opening wired opening hmm. i don't know Ours don't have a wired opening. Does she mean weird opening? Oh, maybe weird. <laughs> Let's see. Um, we use them, we put the pint size. That's the opening. Pints. They come in 32 ounce okay. or 16 ounce. Okay. We, we usually get the 16. 16 ounces holds, yeah, the pint. It's kind of like a little belly button. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah she meant weird. <laughs> Um, I think uh, she's waiting for the new uh, L. Ellie is waiting for the new IOD stamp video. Yes, I have a new video that's coming. Um, love your trip videos. Yeah, there's a lot more happening. That's so. about it. Okay, well, we went over time. Everyone sure. wants you to get some rest. You deserve yeah. it. I'm going to. Thank you all for listening to the story. Um, there's more to come. There's lots of fun DIYs. I was so inspired by 
Monet's Gardens that I'm actually going to try doing. Dion teaches this canvas class. Oh, I know. I want to try my hand at that too, so we'll do that. Yes, I have always been afraid to paint a canvas and try and actually paint like flowers or scenery or landscape. But after going to Monet's Gardens, I'm like, I'm going to try it. I'm, I'm so happy, it. yeah. And, oh, You'll be my are, inspiration. Yes, there is something that I wanted to show. So at the art supplies, at Monet's Gardens, artists would take these wood palettes and they would paint a would landscape like, on oh, the palette itself. Wow. And I found these in the art supply store, so I think it would be really cool to like turn this into, like use this like it was a canvas. Yeah, you know? that'd, that'd be, be very cool. Sure. So I got a bunch of these to um, paint on and sell. All right. Yeah. Okay, that is it. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next week with we'll see you next part week. two and more goodies to share. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, got it?